Welcome back to the NASCAR Nationwide Series here at Talladega. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. We're under our second caution and a number of penalties. The 88 of Jamie McMurray along with the 32 of Brian Vickers, the 75 of Bobby Gerhardt, all busted for speeding. So that's going to hurt their efforts. Let's get ready to go back to racing. Eric McClure has not pitted uh, since lap 26, so he is shown as your race leader. He's chosen the inside line. Brad Keselowski, Paul Menard, Patrick Shelta, and then Scott Wimmer. That's your top five as we're back to green flag racing here at Talladega. Coming down the backstretch, and already Eric McClure gets shuffled as he is now caught in the middle. And then all of a sudden, the 09 a shelter ducks down, and the young Brian Scott goes with him. Yeah, he's wanting to lead this race. See Trevor Bain up on the high side in the 99. He doesn't have a dancing partner right now, though. Shelter finished second in the Arca race here on Friday. And right now, will he lead the lap? Well, here comes the 22 with some help from Kevin Harvick as they're heading for the strike. A little bit further back, there is Kyle Busch in the 88 of Jamie McMurray as they're trying to fight their way back to the front. For two different led reasons. That lap. So yes, Patrick Sheltra is our 10th different leader. We've had 19 total lead changes so far. If you're wondering, are the most leaders we've ever had? 20 and 36 lead changes. I mean, this has been a fantastic day of just racing here at Talladega. Cup race was a great race, and we've seen nothing but good racing here so far. The fans are definitely getting their money's worth today as we are working lap 52 of 117. There is the road for Patrick Sheltra. Let's get more on Sheltra, Shannon. And Marty, you mentioned that second place finish in the ARCA race. It was a hard fought, fought battle for that team. They had to work on the car. They had some repairs. A little bit of the same here today. Patrick Shelter overcame a, a spin on lap 20 to now come back and lead this race. They took two tires on that last stop, and he's getting it done. On board with Kevin Harvick. You can see the view out the left side for him as it's basically now two lines heading down the backstretch. Sheltra and young Brian Scott are saying, fellas, we're going to stay up here for a while. You're going to have to take it away from us. We're not going to give it up. Yeah, they both have fast cars. They've been up in the top 10 the majority of the race. Doing a nice job out front. See that Paul Menard in the third spot. And that third line has uh, one of the Roush cars up there. But you also see in that outside lane, Jamie McMurray now trying to make him his way back from that, that penalty on pit road. Yeah, McMurray's third in that line. It looks like that uh, is Stenhouse. Or check it, it's Colin Brown in the 16. Then you've got uh, right in front, now sliding up is the 22. Here's a better view of it. We go side by side. Look at Tony Raines and Whoa. the 7 of Arpin coming up the middle. Yeah, look at that middle line move. Also into the mix, the 62 of Gone. Up front. It's now Brian Scott. All of a sudden, he has pulled ahead with the help of Paul Menard. Shelf was looking for some help. Scott Wimmer caught in the middle. So is Parker Kligerman. Kligerman's right there. Here comes Menard now on the low side. Keslowski and Harvick with Tony Raines right behind them. It looks like maybe the high line may be the preferred place. Yeah, and that was an example right there probably of where Kevin Harvick chose to go with Brad Keselowski because he's a little more familiar with him. That middle was going pretty good, but that was a driver in Parker Kligerman that, that Kevin Harvick wasn't that familiar with, so he chose the man that he's raced with. And look at the 11 of Brian Scott, and look at the difference in miles per hour. Scott is dropping because he doesn't have the help. Now all of a sudden he gets the help and he starts coming back. It is interesting when we can show you that, and it's just so vivid. About Tony Raines down on the inside. He's trying to take the lead. Well, Tony's had some good runs over the course of time on these restrictor plate races. And he's a driver that a lot of these other uh, cup drivers are comfortable being around. He's a, they know they can count on him and trust him to run tight. You can see right there Kevin Harvey now pulling up behind him. 
Now, remember when Kyle said, we got to team up or we're going to be in trouble? Well, the 18 and the 20 are matched up. Well, they were for a moment. Kyle's got to sort of catch back up to him. Remember, Kyle was having overheating problems, cooled it off. As they come down the backstretch, it is still the 22 of Keselowski. Tony Reigns, look yeah, out. That was just about a problem right there. You saw them all stacking up. And now the problem is, where does Logano go? Because he went below the line. He cannot improve. Well, he did a good job right there to avoid a crash. He kind of just got out of the mix, and that kept uh, the other cars from making contact. Yeah, and I think Tony Reigns gave him a little bit of room there also. So that could have been a really bad situation as we're four wide through the trial. Oh, and, th and they hang Tony out. I mean, he is just going to get the old NASCAR Talladega shuffle right here. Nobody helps him, and he had done so well getting up into that number two spot. And look at it, still nobody. One is the loneliest. Whoa, number. Jamie McMurray just slots in right in front of Scott Wimmer. Yeah, that's what makes him so good at these type places. Well, the action continues here as we're working lap 57 at the Aaron's 312 at Talladega. It's going to continue right to the checkered flag. ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series brought to you by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And Verizon, the network with the most 3G coverage. Well, let's talk a little bit what's coming up. NASCAR Now will be on tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. And then the next stop for the Nationwide Series, Friday 7 Eastern on ESPN2 from Richmond. Now, next Saturday at 1.30 Eastern on ABC, it'll be the IZOD IndyCar Series at the Oval at Kansas. And then on Saturday, 9 Eastern on ESPN2, qualifying for the AAA Insurance NHRA Midwest Nationals and finals next Sunday, 7 Eastern, also on ESPN2. So we've got your whole weekend booked for you if you're an auto racing fan from end to end. Right now, you're looking at Kyle Busch in front of Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, and Paul Menard with Brian Scott now fifth. And while we were gone, we had like two or three different lead <laughs> changes, and that's how quickly it happened. I think Kyle Busch found a way to cure his uh, overheating problem. Yeah, put it up front. Yeah, yeah that's that a lot uh, Brad Keselowski slid up the track just a little, and nobody went up there with him. He went all the way back. He's now 14th, now 15th on the racetrack. Yeah, Jamie McMurray took the lead there a minute ago, and now he's sliding backwards just outside the top 10. See, right there in sixth spot, a former champion, Jeff Green, in that 40 car, having a great run. And we can tell you, you know, everybody was saying there were no starting parks today. The cars that are out or off of this track are due to either mechanicals or from the crashes. Let's get more on the 18, Dave Burns. The interesting thing about that first pit, that last pit stop was that they did not take on any tires. They made a slight adjustment, including taking uh, tape off the grill to cool it down. Uh, you guys, of course, said that being out front will help that as well, but they had that problem partially fixed by removal of tape on that last run. They're running well now. Mike? Well, Dave, at the beginning of the broadcast, we talked about the challenges facing the double-duty drivers. A, the physical challenge, but most importantly, the mental challenge, wondering what everybody else is going to do. Well, as far as Kevin Harvick goes, you can tell he's focused just by listening to his radio. It has been very rare today that he's even keyed it. The only sound we really hear is from his spotter. He is just focusing on what he has to do. Well, talking to the guys after last week at Texas, they said it was the day after where they really felt drained. And But I, I liked what you talked about at the beginning of the broadcast, DJ, the fact that this is mentally intense because you're so close to each other, lap after lap after lap. Yeah, this is just one of those races, the two races, you can't ever get away from the other cars. No matter how good your car is, you're always going to be there surrounded by other cars. And so it's just mentally taxing for you. And before the day's out, you hope that that doesn't make you make a mistake. Clint Boyer in the 21, and they hook up together with uh, McMurray and the 22 of Brad Keselowski as they are on the high side. Yeah, this will be a group to watch right here just to see how far they can carry this momentum. And Keselowski tucks in behind the rookie Arpin in his first nationwide race. And Arpin doing a fine job. That is back in 14th, 15th position. Three wide heading into the corner. 